To be an enemy of the U.S. is dangerous, but to be a friend is fatal. This famous quote from Henry Kissinger is now unfolding in real time as Europe's biggest economy by far, its industrial powerhouse Germany, is now collapsing. And yet the Western media has hidden the true cause. Just last month, Germany's economic minister, Robert Habeck, said in a speech that the German economy is performingly, quote, dramatically bad. When even a German uses such strong language, you know the situation is really bad. Last year, Germany posted the worst performance across all major global economies, with its economy being the only one to actually shrink by 0.3%. Even worse, this bleak situation shows no signs of improving. There were high hopes that 2024 would turn things around and be a comeback year for Germany. And until recently, the German government projected a growth rate of 1.3%. However, shockingly, they've now been forced to slash this forecast to a mere 0.2%. The scariest part is that most economists and business leaders agree this isn't some temporary recession, but a deeper structural problem of the German economic model. If you think this is an exaggeration, understand that by now, an astonishing two in three German companies have left Germany or at least partially relocated abroad, with most citing the sky-high energy prices, inflation, overregulation, and endless political debates as their reasons for leaving. What or who is causing this catastrophic collapse of Germany's long-standing economic and industrial prowess? The truth is frankly far scarier than what mainstream media has been telling us, and in today's video, I'm going to reveal it to you. Make sure you watch until the end where I'll reveal the shocking truth of how Germany was played by the United States and continue to score own goals in tackling this economic crisis. Germany's dire situation is being caused by three main reasons. Number one, the country's sky-high energy prices. Number two, its reduced exports to China. And number three, its increases in military expenditure. What's most incredible about these three things is that they, in fact, all have one main culprit, and that is actually the United States. But this simply isn't an America bashing video. Instead, I'm going to break down each of these three reasons with cold hard facts and reveal just how large a role the United States has played in Germany's stunning decline. Let's start with Germany's reduced exports to China. Until recently, Germany was the world's export powerhouse, with its main exports of motor vehicles, machinery, and chemical products being the lifeblood of its economy. Crucially, China has been Germany's main trading partner every single year for the past eight years including being an essential and massive export market for German goods. Simply put, China's market is indispensable to Germany's economy. However, this vital relationship is currently under attack by the United States. Consider the companies Volkswagen and BASF, two of Germany's largest companies by annual revenue, and thus two key contributors to the German economy. Only last month, they were coerced by the U.S. government into shutting down their factories in China, specifically in the western province of Xinjiang. It's here that for many years, the U.S. government and military industrial complex have pushed the narrative that China has enslaved the local Muslim Uyghur population and subjected them to ethnic cleansing and forced labor, despite overwhelming evidence that clearly shows this is not true. If you've come to believe this narrative, make sure you watch to the end of today's video, and I'll share a link to another video that breaks down the shocking discovery from two famous German Sinologist professors who share the real truth of what's actually happening in Xinjiang today. But first, let me show you how the U.S. government's coercion works. First, BASF was threatened by the Interparliamentary Alliance on China, it's IPAC, an international group of Western politicians founded by anti-China hawks such as Senator Marco Rubio, and whose purpose is essentially to pressure governments into containing China. Note that IPAC is funded by the NED, a CIA front which finances regime change operations in countries deemed to be hostile to the United States. It's also funded by George Soros Open Society, whose stated purpose is to help counter the threat China's growing influence poses to the rules-based order. The threat BAS received read, the credibility and integrity of your company are at stake, and we believe it is crucial for you to take swift and decisive action in addressing this matter. I don't think I need to elaborate on what happens when a country or company doesn't comply with the U.S. government or the CIA's wishes. Unsurprisingly, IPAC bases its ultimatum to BASF to pull out of Xinjiang on a new report from the infamous Adrian Zenz, 
a well-known anti-China hawk, an evangelic born-again Christian who has said, I feel very clearly led by God against Beijing. His report asserts, without any evidence that BASF appears to be implicated in gross abuses of the Uyghur to a shocking degree. Working for the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation, an anti-communist propaganda shop founded by the U.S. Congress, Zen has consistently produced highly questionable research on Xinjiang that has not withstood basic scrutiny. But unsurprisingly, this hasn't prevented Western media and governments from frequently citing it as established fact. BASF has always conducted regular due diligence measures ever since opening factories in Xinjiang, including internal and external audits, and has not once found any evidence of any human right violations. BASF CEO Martin Brudemüller said these audits did not reveal any wrongdoings or something that would compromise our standards. Of course, IPAC didn't care and maintained maximum pressure on BASF until they caved and pulled the plug on their operations. What's crazy is that the US is currently executing this exact same playbook with Germany's largest company, Volkswagen. In a coordinated attack, shortly after the victims of Communism Memorial Foundation and Adrian Zenz produced their allegations against BASF, IPAC followed up by threatening and coercing them into closing shop. And now, the victims of Communism Memorial Foundation have just brought literally exactly the same allegations against Volkswagen. It doesn't take a genius to figure out on what's really happening. This isn't the first time that Volkswagen has been baselessly accused of employing or being complicit in slave labor in Xinjiang. Over the years, Volkswagen never caved to the pressure and like BASF, conducted numerous audits that once again never found any forced labor. However, this time, it's looking like the German automaker will no longer be able to withstand the pressure and be forced to shut down its operations as well. Even crazier, other German automakers have been targeted as well, as the US recently impounded thousands of Porsche, Audi, and Bentley cars merely because they were suspected of containing parts from Western China. Shockingly, these examples are far from isolated incidents. Since deciding that China needs to be contained and decoupled from, the United States has pressured everyone, from companies to countries, to fall in line and do the same even if it will destroy their economy. If you refuse or show reluctance, the U.S. government employs threats, coercion, and even sanctions. For example, in 2022, the U.S. government banned the sale of advanced microchips to China in an effort to cripple China's growing microchip industry. It then coerced chipmakers across the world to comply, one of the most notable examples being Dutch semiconductor company ASML. This has hurt chipmakers significantly, including American ones such as NVIDIA, as China has typically been their biggest customer and represents a huge portion of their revenue. It also must be pointed out that for companies coerced into pulling out of Xinjiang, including Volkswagen and BASF, this has led to major job losses in the region. And thus, ironically, it actually hurts local workers the most, including Uyghurs, because they now have lost their livelihoods. As much as the US is to blame here, astonishingly, almost all of Germany's political elite, mainstream media, and general population have eagerly obeyed America's wishes to demonize and decouple from China. This is absolutely bizarre and frankly foolish because numerous experts and German business leaders have repeatedly warned that decoupling would destroy the German economy. The sad truth is that much of Germany, especially its political and media establishment, have a long history of blindly taking US foreign policy narratives at face value, even when they themselves are the ones getting screwed. The best recent example of this is the bombing of the Nord Stream pipeline, whose sole purpose was to transport natural gas from Russia to Germany and the rest of Western Europe. While the culprit has yet to be ascertained, it's highly likely that it was the United States for a number of reasons. First, US President Joe Biden literally said they would. Right before Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022, Biden asserted, if Russia invades, there will be no more Nord Stream. We will put an end to the project. I promise we will be able to do it. Second, the severing of Germany's energy dependence on Russia has been a long-standing, openly stated American objective. Third, last year, famous and award-winning investigative journalist Seymour Hersh published a bombshell report in which he meticulously describes how the bombing was planned, prepared, and executed by none other than the United States. You'd think this would have dominated German news, but shockingly, 
In the aftermath of the bombing, this received virtually zero airtime. Instead, German media uncritically repeated U.S. government denials and focused on destroying Hirsch's reputation. Sadly, most Germans naively believe that Western countries are just not capable of such agrarious acts, much less war crimes, simply because they are democratic and have Western values. In short, Western nations are the good guys and would never do such a thing. And that leads us to the second point, sky-high energy prices. Germany's skyrocketing energy prices have also played a tremendous role in the country's dramatic decline. After the Russian invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, Germany and the EU introduced sanctions against Russia, while Russia responded by sharply decreasing its delivery of natural gas to Europe. This skyrocketed Germany's energy prices and severely damaged its economy. This is because before the invasion, Germany imported a whopping 55% of their gas from Russia. And it's precisely this cheap Russian gas that has been so important in enabling Germany to become an economic and industrial powerhouse. Of course, sanctioning your main energy supplier was never the smartest choice to begin with. The fallout cannot be understated. In the same year the war started, the market price for natural gas has increased more than tenfold. While households and smaller businesses were somewhat protected from this massive spike through policy measures such as the infamous gas price break, household gas prices still tripled at the worst point of the energy crisis in 2022. And even though gas prices have since come down, they're still around double of what they were before the war. And shockingly, it's estimated that this will remain the new normal for the foreseeable future. Incredibly, Germany's price of electricity, much of which is produced in gas power plants, has fared even worse. In fact, the price has been spiking ever since the war broke out, and this trend hasn't slowed, let alone reversed. By now, Germans pay some of the highest electricity prices worldwide. Altogether, this has caused countless German citizens to struggle to make ends meet and even stay warm enough in the winter. But it's not just ordinary Germans who suffered. Remember, an astonishing two in three German businesses have left the country to some extent. It's worst in the country's mechanical engineering, industrial goods, and automotive sectors, where an astonishing 70% of companies have relocated abroad to a moderate or very large extent. It's not hard to see why Germany's economic and industrial power has collapsed so rapidly. What's more, since Germany is the biggest economy in Europe, when it suffers, the EU does as well and the damage is rippling through the entire continent. Ludovic Viot, the Confederal Secretary of the European Trade Union Confederation, sums up the dire situation well. We are facing a very worrying situation. The lack of investment we are seeing today is already having dramatic implications for the working communities. Factories are closing, and jobs are being cut in the very sectors that lifted Europe to where it is today. Needless to say, Germany and the EU were forced to find alternative and, frankly, far more expensive sources. One of those sources was, in fact, the United States, who sold it to them at astronomical prices, leading Germany and other nations to complain and accuse the U.S. of profiting off the war and make Europe dependent on its gas. However, the U.S. role in Germany's energy crisis is much bigger than just ripping off the Germans. Not only did the U.S. openly wish to wipe out Germany's energy relationship with Russia, but the U.S. shares significant blame for causing this war, which led to Germany's crisis in the first place. Allow me to explain. Whether or not you believe Russia's invasion into Ukraine was justified, it's undeniable that it was sparked to a significant degree by NATO's decades-long expansion eastwards, in particular, its potential expansion into Ukraine. This is because it's widely understood that Russia perceives NATO's eastward expansion as an existential threat to his existence. And the Kremlin has been very clear that expanding all the way to the Russian borders, such as in the case of Ukraine, is a red line that cannot be crossed. Despite this, the U.S. and its allies have always welcomed and even encouraged its expansion in what is commonly referred to as NATO's open-door policy. Ever since the Soviet Union collapsed, NATO's borders have steadily crept closer and closer to Russia's borders despite strong and repeated objections from Russia. The examples are endless, such as in 1997, when Russian President Boris Yeltsin tried to secure a guarantee from US President Clinton that NATO wouldn't add any former Soviet republics. Clinton, of course, refused. There's also NATO's first Secretary General, Lord Hastings Ismay, who famously said that the purpose of NATO is to keep the Americans in, 
the Germans down and the Russians out. Russia's general sentiment towards NATO and its expansion was perhaps best captured by Russian President Vladimir Putin, who last December stated at a news conference, you promised us in the 1990s that NATO would not move an inch to the east. You cheated us shamelessly. However, once again, Germany shares the blame here. In fact, once again, Germany's establishment in virtual lockstep with the United States has been one of the biggest cheerleaders for severing its energy ties with Russia. And once again, even though numerous experts have advised against this, warning it would lead to the utter demise of the German economy and industry, Germany passionately declared it should only do business with countries that are democracies and share our superior democratic values, unlike those evil authoritarian dictators. The German government then continued to score one goal after another. After sanctioning Russia, which led to the loss of its main energy supply, German lawmakers proudly decided to shut down the country's last three nuclear power plants as well. And not because they weren't working, but rather due to a long-standing hatred of nuclear energy. This, of course, exasperated the energy crisis even more. In the end, Germany was all but begging other nations for natural gas, and now pays a much higher price for it. It's simply bizarre that Germany would needlessly sanction and aggravate its main energy supplier, who supplies 55% of its gas while at the same time clinging to ideology so unwaveringly that you prioritize doing business with like-minded nations over keeping your own citizens from freezing to death in the winter. You seriously can't make this stuff up. Even worse, it's unlikely the German government will change course and come up with real solutions to this tremendous energy crisis. Siegfried Ruswem, head of the BDI, the umbrella organization of the German industry said that the German government argues endlessly and almost dogmatically about problems instead of coming to solutions together in a discourse of factual arguments. This has led to uncertainty among companies and citizens alike. Lastly, Germany's increased military expenditures are accelerating its decline as well. Over the past decade, Germany has increased its military spending by 42%, according to a new report commissioned by Greenpeace. But given its new economic dilemma and industrial collapse, Germany frankly can't afford to continue throwing money at its military because the money is desperately needed elsewhere. In fact, the Greenpeace report highlights that spending it almost anywhere else yields a better ROI in terms of economic growth and job creation to name a few. And once again, the US is squarely to blame here. A key driver of Germany's increased military expenditures has been the war in Ukraine, which as I explained, the US shares considerable blame for. But it's also been driven by the US's recent erratic policies towards NATO. During the Trump administration, President Trump repeatedly threatened to withdraw from the treaty, and at NATO's 2018 summit in Brussels, he actually very nearly did this. Trump has always viewed NATO as a drain on American resources by European freeloaders. And just last month, he even stated he would encourage Russia to attack European allies if they don't meet their military spending targets stipulated by NATO. Germany has persistently fell short of this target and has now essentially been scared into increasing its military spending because Germany and the EU fear the US can no longer be depended on in the long run for its protection. Everyone, it's abundantly clear that the US has directly contributed to Germany's shocking economic and industrial decline. Germany must wise up to this reality and stop letting ideological bias and the supposed morale superiority of the West get in the way of this. A special thanks to Arnois Vitron on Twitter, whose recent tweets about this dire situation were the inspiration for today's video. These are insights which Western media will never divulge, but yet are so crucial to understanding the complex geopolitical situation that is happening around the world. Everyone, you could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to spend it with me here on YouTube. I'm grateful for your support. Let me know what you think about Germany's economic collapse and how the United States is playing a very large role in that. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. I can't wait to see you all in our next video soon.